Our discussion today is on Global Health Service. This is number 16. And we are talking about life expectancy and health prevention. We will first of all discuss the first 10 countries. Then we we'll talk of social and physical determinants of why people will live longer in one country and shorter in another country. The first country we want to talk about today is Bolivia. Bolivia is number 141 among countries with a life expectancy of 65.56. We have Yemen. Yemen is 142 among countries and it has a life expectancy of 63.94. Then we have Satom and Principle, which is 143 among countries with a life expectancy of 63.82. Then we have 144, which is Ghana, one of the first African countries. Ghana has a life expectancy of 62.71. Then we have Cambodia with a life expectancy of 61.54. We have Papua New Guinea which is number 146 with a life expectancy of 61.50. Then we have Gabon. Gabon have, has a life expectancy of 61.28. Number 149 among the countries will be Namibia with a population life expectancy of 61.09. Haiti has 60.99. And finally, Sudan has a life expectancy of 60.27. We have social determinants and sometimes physical determinants of why people live the way they live in the different countries. The first of them today will be climatic change. In the United States, we have snow, the wet season. We also have fall, we have winter, then we have summer. And with this numerous kind of weather, the climate is often changing and human beings will battle to be able to live and work within this changing weather. Where there is climatic change, some people work very hard. In some other countries where you have just maybe dry season, rainy season, people tend to be lazy. So climatic change also contributes to the way we live our life. See people going to the gym, practicing, doing exercises, because weather is often changing. Apart from that, we have global warming. Global warming is being trumpeted all over the world. And some people don't seem to understand that there is something like global warming. It has a lot to do with the lives of people because it affects the land, it affects agriculture, it affects even the weather, so many things. So where there is global warming, you expect that there's going to be a problem one time or the other. So it depends on how a particular government, a particular country, the policy makers handle the issue of global warming. And that's something to be taken into consideration when you are talking of life expectancy. Then you have drought. Some areas are so dry. If you go to Niger Republic, you go to Chad in Africa, you go to people living almost towards the Sahara Desert. They have drought. They don't have good agricultural products from time to time. And when people don't eat well, when there is uh, frustration and starvation, you don't expect them to live very long. That is why you see them dying at the age of 46 years, when somebody in Monaco is dying at 89 years, born at the same time. Or some other person in Japan is dying uh, for 84 years and maybe in the United States within 79 years. Apart from drought, you have malnutrition, which is the effect of climatic change, global warming and the drought. You have malnutrition in a place. 
where people don't eat well. You see people emaciated, you see people dying. And that's something we have to take into consideration when we are discussing life expectancy because it does affect the people living in a particular environment. Apart from malnutrition, there is also the issue of transportation. I know people who live in places where they hardly see any vehicle, no cars. They walk with their legs almost throughout life. They carry their load on their head, living some difficult life. You don't expect those kind of people to live very long because they would have beaten up the body, doing all those things. Transportation system is very important where people live. It's not only by air, using the aeroplane, you also have cars, you have buses, you have those going by ship. So where there is not enough transportation system is going to affect the lives of the people. What of toxic hazards where people have toxic materials, where people are living in an environment that emit all these chemicals, things that kill people very easily. You expect the lives of those kind of people to be shortened. They are not likely to live long. Then of course you have pollution, air pollution everywhere where the air is messed up because of industries, because of the type of thing within the environment where the air is not clean. When people are breathing that kind of air, you expect them to live shorter lives. Water pollution. It's not just air pollution, you also have water pollution. When water is polluted, it is a problem. If you visit some of the countries, the kind of water they drink is not white, it's green. Some blue, with all kinds of colors. And you don't expect that kind of colored water to make people to live long. In a lot of African countries, apart from bottled water, they have what they call pure water. See them struggling to manufacture water by themselves and they mess it up. People take that kind of thing, develop all kinds of diseases and die very early. So those are things policymakers need to take into consideration to look at the kind of environment, the air pollution, the water the people drink within the environment, look at the toxic hazard within the environment and see that people are not just consuming those things. The transportation system, is that that which is helping the people? Why are people malnourished? They are not eating well. Maybe look at the agricultural products and look at what is being produced within the environment. Look at the drought. When people are living in an environment where there is drought, of course, there is a problem. And then consider the issue of global warming seriously in different countries and be able to attend to them. The climatic change, I've said, makes some people smarter and some other people lazy. And these are issues we need to take into consideration. It's not an individualistic thing. It's something governments need to think about, policymakers need to take into consideration when designing policies that guide the lives of the population they are in control of. As leaders, these things are very, very important and paramount to almost all the countries in the world. We hope to continue to the seventh series next week. Thank you and goodbye.